Hi, I'm Mike Garrett. I'm the founder here at FounderCo. And today in this video, we're gonna be talking about how to actually find a problem worth solving. Let's go over an overview of what we're gonna cover in this video of how to actually find a problem worth solving. Now, the first part is just, just us defining what is a problem worth solving. How is it actually, what, what makes this problem that's so important that we actually should be solving it? Two is by actually finding your passion for a particular problem, because if you're not passionate about a problem, you're probably not gonna actually build a business or startup around it um, and actually wanna go through this roller coaster of emotions that comes with just running a new business and a startup. And third, how to actually match your passion with the problem that you have found or the multiple, two, multiple problems that you have found that align with your, pro with your passion. So that's what we're gonna cover in this video. Now, what is a problem worth solving? To actually show you an example and to give you a better grasp of this, we're gonna start with an analogy that a lot of venture capitalists or VCs and a lot of entrepreneurial educators actually use when they're teaching this kind of concept. And that is the difference between a vitamin and a painkiller. Well, a vitamin's actually, you know, it's, it's a nice to have. You don't actually need it to live. It's a nice to have. While a painkiller is, yes, it's taking away my problem and this is really important to me. I'm willing to pay for it or make, almost do anything to make it, this pain go away. So you can think about that problem. Is your problem, you know, it's a nice to have, it's not that important to me, I can live without it? Or is it a problem that's like, oh my gosh, this is the, like if I got rid of this pain, it would completely change my lifestyle or my life. It would help me so significantly. Now examples of vitamins would be luxury items, toys, Netflix, Hulu, anything that you don't necessarily need to solve your big problems. Now, so it's gonna depend on how each person sees it too. So some people might see some, a certain item as a vitamin or product or service as a vitamin, while others might see it as a crucial you know, painkiller. So this is when identifying your target market is really important. Now with that being said, an example of, of a painkiller is you know, like grocery store or particularly with, um, with COVID-19 actually going on, would be like toilet paper and hairstylist those right now would be considered a painkiller. Now sometimes they might be, you know, you don't actually need them, they're more of a vitamin. So things can change on circumstances and the target market like we just mentioned. The other item we wanna talk about when talking about whether or not a problem is worth solving is the total addressable market or TAM. Now the total addressable market is the potential market that you have for your, for your business to succeed. Now, ideally, you want this number to be if you know it's gigantic and you can actually get a piece of that. Examples of gigantic markets would be like Uber, Airbnb, like those. They have really, really high target addressable markets. Now, smaller target addressable markets would be like a local ice cream shop or a local grocery store. You know, you know those can change if they build up chains and they go national. However, most all local businesses have a smaller t target addressable market, or, yeah, total addressable market, than a you know these big these monster companies as you're going through the total addressable market numbers you want to do things bottom up not top down and what we mean by that is as you do your research look into you know you can always look into yeah like hey like the rental car market is this is, is worth this amount of money and the common mistake that a lot of early entrepreneurs make and i've made it to in the past is that you take like one percent of that market and say hey this is our total addressable market or this is what we can go get kind of thing and that's a really bad way of going about it. The better way is this bottom up method and saying, hey, can we actually get you know, 10 customers at $10,000 a month? Or can we get 100 customers at 1,000? You, know, you can kind of think through that and then create assumptions around how you can get those customers and why those customers see your problem as a painkiller rather than a vitamin. So again, define your target market and then define whether or not your problem is a painkiller or a vitamin. So if you take in the you know, target market, painkiller, vitamin analogy, and the total adjustment market, and all three, if you can give you know, green chat marks to all three of those, you have a problem that's worth solving. The second part of this video we're gonna talk about is your passion for the problem. And your passion for the problem is important because this is what gets you through those really tough times um, as a startup founder. There's gonna be times that come and you're like, I don't wanna go through this. But if you're passionate enough about the problem, you're gonna wanna spend your time on it, you're gonna go through those hard times, and you will get through it. So how do you actually find, make sure that you, for your passion or what your passion, how do you actually know what you're passionate about? Well, here's a few tips on actually how to find your passions. One, 
ask a simple question. This is a question you probably get a lot if you've been talking about these things is what gets you up in the morning? Why do you get up out of bed and what do you like what do you want to spend your time on? And on that note, where do you actually spend a lot of time right now and you can't get enough of spending time on that? Now, examples can be, hey, I actually love learning about YouTube and how do they actually how do you create, you know, content? Well, then go create content around your passions. Or it can be, I love sports and I want to spend more time doing sports. Cool. Spend more time with sports. I'm sure you can find problems that are worth solving in there. Now, the other question I, that I personally use quite a bit actually is, when do your family and friends say you light up? Is it when you're talking about a certain subject or this or this? Like, ask your friends and family. They know when you light up about certain, when, when you get more emotional about certain topics and it's okay we all go through different things different times of life and these passions will change however there's certain topics that we're always passionate about so friends and family usually know this the best because they watch our emotions live and they usually see that enough um, that they can pick up on these things the third and last part of this video is how to actually match your passion with the problem now for most people they're not as lucky that they they don't go super hand in hand all right away now some people do. They they have the passion that the what their like what the problem that they found. Sometimes they do align, and those are the lucky entrepreneurs that are lucky um, that they can align really quickly. However, that's not most people. Most people don't have this passion about this, and then they found a problem, and they usually don't align. That's most people don't have that alignment, and that's really hard. So if you don't have that alignment, that's okay. And sometimes the problem that you have found is better for someone else to go solve. And that's okay. So your ideas are you know, a dime a dozen. You're gonna, you're gonna have so many different ideas and problems you're gonna find. That's part of being an entrepreneur, is that you're a problem solver. So seeing problems is what you do. Now, to actually go find a problem within your passion, we really recommend is spending time in your passion. So hang around them, talk to the people in the industry or space, and just be part of the community. Because you never know that you, know, you might land in something and, oh my gosh, this is such a big problem. Or you might hear someone say, well, that's just how we've always done it. If you hear that, that can be a big monster problem that you can go solve. So hang on the community that you're passionate about and that you love being around because also it'll help you build your team in the future and you want to build your network before you actually need it. And lastly, as you're going about it, you know, trying to align your problem and your passion to find a problem worth solving, remember you want to be on a mission as an entrepreneur. You don't want to just you know, go through the slugfest of being an entrepreneur and trying to be in it for the money, that you're gonna burn out, you're not gonna love what you're doing. That's what we don't want. Find a problem and a passion that you wanna be on a mission about. So whether or not that's ending homelessness, that's, you know, that's a really dramatic example, but find problems that you're really passionate about and you believe you can be on a mission for. And you can be on a mission for this for at least a decade because that's how most startups last. They last about a decade nowadays. So, and if you have that problem that you're really passionate about and that you're on a mission for, you're, you might have this feeling of we can't fail because you're so passionate about it. So find a mission and go after it. That's all I have for how to find a problem worth solving. Now, if you have any questions or comments or concerns, leave them in the comments below. And as always, subscribe to us. And if you're even interested for more content, go to foundryco.org and we have two new podcasts. One is Founder Feedback and the other is Inside the Ecosystem. We would love to have you check them out. Um, and be part of our Foundry Co. community. So until next time, see you later.